first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio Get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is eight o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, and in definite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. All right, all right. Peace, peace. All right, once again with Dr. Eileen. And um, tonight we're going to have a very good show. We got my man, Nacho Tahuti, going to be dropping on the Mother Goddess Principle, which is basically the Kundalini. Now, um, of course, you see the show is called Reiki, the Universal Life Force Energy. Now, that's the Mother Goddess Principle. So uh, what I'm going to do is detail some of the information and um, we're going to get into the discussion. All right. So when we talk about the Kundalini, we talk about the Mother Goddess principle, in which that, um, unlike man or woman who builds material uh, with things, in which that they have, in which that is from nature, she herself is nature, and from herself, she built the universe, or made the universe, or created the universe, and everything within it, and she dwells within everything in which that she makes. In other words, everything which that is tangible and intangible, everything which that is visible and invisible. All right, so this is the thing which that we have to understand. Um, she is prana. She is chi. She is ki. She is um, the Holy Spirit. She is kohuna mana. She is all of these things. All right, she's everything in which that you can possibly think of and beyond. She is the knowable and the unknowable. At the same time, this is the God principle in which that Christians, when they say, well, God exists everywhere in all times and all spaces, that's not the Kundalini principle. That is the God in which that we're referring to. Now, of course, it has the feminine aspect to it in which that deals with um, the soul principle itself because your soul actually is a droplet of that power or of that force. You know what I'm saying? And so that's basically what we're dealing with. You know, so that's what we're dealing with, you know, when we talk about that. You know, so when we get into those particular sciences, um, you got to understand what's really going on. And those um, principles is what is applied to your very soul. Like I said, your soul is feminine. Um, and, of course, we're talking about perspective here. We're not talking about um, um, as in just gender. Of course, we can see it that way, but we're talking about as far as in um, the aspects or the attribute of nurturing. Um she is a nurturing aspect, right? This is why God has the qualities of mercy, love, you know, uh, righteousness, truth. 
because it symbolizes my yacht on those particular um with those particular attributes, you know, which is feminine, you know. Um these are the things which that we have to look at. So when we're talking about the universal life force energy, which is referred to as prana or chia ki energy, we're talking about the mother, goddess principle, which is the kundalini. Um you have kundalini um prana or prana kundalini, which is the outside or external DNA. Then when she personifies within the human body, she becomes the concentration of that universal or microcosm life force in miniature form, the microcosm aspect now, which is concentrated at the base of the spine. That is the special abode or what is known as the root or base chakra or the sacral bone tail area. It is there which that this is electromagnetic or photonic energy raises up within each and every one of us is the upswelling of energy. If I took a 19... Um, at 19 degrees, let's go, um, tetrahedron, which is a six-point star configuration and overlaid it over the human body at 19 degrees south and at 19 degrees north, we would see an upswelling of energy. That is our set, which is another form of uh, our set, and she um, awakens because, remember, the kundalini is three and a half times coil at the base of the spine, half asleep. So as she awakens to, um, in other words, it's only 10% active. The other 90% is inactive. So as she awakens to more than 90%, in order to make that total 100%, um, you become strengthened orically and through your chakra system. And that electromagnetic energy um, comes up in an elliptical pattern, similar to the pattern of a snake or a sigh. And um, hence the reason why of the snake-like pattern or serpent. Hence the reason why Kundalini is called the serpentine fire. So as you just heard, the last song, one of the last songs we played was Firestarter by Sister Star. You know what I'm saying? So um, hopefully that song um, been able to um, fire start or jump start that Kundalini. That's what that is actually symbolic to um, in one aspect too. So um, we're going to talk about the Mother Goddess Principle and also some actual application on how to um, activate um, that life force energy within you. Like we said, that's the concentration of the universal life force in you, all right? Um, it's seven generations on your mother's side, seven generations on your father's side, concentrated, you know, those memories, that strength, uh, those characteristics, those attributes, all of that is concentrated within you. Even your um, past lives in which that is within your medulla and magata is a concentration, you know, of all of you. And, of course, your past lives is, uh, resides within what is called the over soul. So all of your incarnations or reincarnations um, exist there. Those, that's where your past lives are um, located at, as well as also the gift of photographic memory. And as I bet monks and others, um, the Buddhists and the Shaolin, they would actually tap on the area at the back of the head, right under the hollow area of, the, um, of when the spine goes up into the brain, that area specifically, and they would tap there 25 times, three times a day in order to scar that area so the person can um, begin to have what is called photographic memory as well as also gain access to their past lives, um, glimpses of it in which that will come through in uh, visions or dreams or um, or while a person is fantasizing or daydreaming, as they say. Um, these um, occurrences um, take place. You would get flashes actually right before your eyes. All right, so these are the things that we have to um, master so that um, we can um, karmically affect those past lives. In other words, um, some things in which that is built up from the past life, what happens is that they are still on us, you know, those um, causes and effects, and we carry them into this incarnation. And so we're still paying for some of the things in which that we did in the last incarnation. Well, what happens is that when the Kundalini energy raises up and comes through the chakra system, what happens is that um, it awakens those um, that karma or those causes. It's the effects of those causes, and sometimes you go through um, pains and um, dis- disappointments and depressions and certain things like that because of this energy coming up. Sometimes you get sick, you know, as it comes up through the coat and what he's doing is cleansing your system. It's cleansing you out, um, essentially, emotionally, of those baggages. And so um, there's a technique in which it is called cosmic kundalini, in which that you actually channel the energy down from the cosmos into you 
um, in which that is taught by Sanyata Saraswati, my grandmaster um, teacher, in which that um, bypasses the chakra system so that you won't get the um, problems in which that you are getting, um, you know, from raising the Kundalini energy, those symptoms. If you go online and type um, type into the Google um, Kundalini symptoms or the symptoms of the Kundalini, you will actually see um, migraines, headaches, um, spasms, muscle spasms, as they would say, nerves jumping, um, um, whooshing or ringing in the ears or hearing bells or chimes or some things of that effect. You know, um, these are symptoms of the Kundalini raising or rising. Um, but this is all symbolic also to the 90-degree perpendicular level of Hiram Abyss, on which that symbolizes the black Madonna and child, essentially. The black Madonna is, of course, the Kundalini, which is actually symbolic to melanin, that carbon or the life force principle within each and every one of us. And that atomic power is symbolic to Jesus or to Heru, in which that raises up. So, or said, and Heru raises up together through the spinal column. Or Mary and Jesus raises up and to ascend to the Father who art in heaven so that Jesus can sit on the right-hand side, hence the activation of the right hemisphere of the brain. So this is what is really going on. This is so. This is why it's essential known to the code description because they are allegorical in essence. They're allegorical, all right? And so when we're talking about it, um, we have to look at it from that perspective, all right? So we're going to get into um, a little bit more things here. We're getting ready to um, bring um, Brother Nasser Tahudi on um, in a few minutes, and, um, you know, you're going to hear some good stuff. You know, um, right now let me con continue, and we're going to get more into those particular sciences of the Kundalini. Now, we know that the Kundalini symbolizes that life force energy concentrated at the base of the spine, and as it comes up, it moves from 6,000 degrees in temperature to 2 million degrees as it reaches the crown chakra in order to illuminate the crown on which that is with a golden light or halo or helios around it, which is the word halo or helios is actually derived from the ancient Egyptian word haru or heru, which means the hero. So it's at that point when you become a hero, actually, a mystic or spiritual hero or haru, all right? This is what is symbolic, too, when you see the pictures of Jesus Christ um, with that, that symbolic to the caress or Christ, um, which if you read Gerald Massey's works, in particular his book, Books of Beginnings, Natural Genesis, Genesis, Genesis Revisited, not Genesis Revisited, excuse me, um, if you read Gerald Massey lectures, as well as also Ancient Egypt, the Light of the World, as well as um, the mystical Christ, you know, mystical Jesus and the, um, um, and the Christ, um, those particular books by Gerald Massey, you will actually see um, him correlate that caress. Um, the word Christ or Krishna is derived from the ancient Egyptian word caress. And that caress means the mummified body of Osiris, which is all saw, which is talking about the soul itself. And the soul itself is known as Kundalini Shiva, in which that is also um, inside of the pineal gland, half asleep. And the way in which that it is awoken is through the awakening of the Kundalini. And as she awakens, she awakens him. So hence, he becomes resurrected, and through his resurrection, um, and through their divine marriage in heaven, as the Bible speaks of, on um, Christ and the church or the bride and the bridegroom, and that divine marriage in heaven, uh, what happens is that um, through that marriage is what produces that Christ force or caress or coming forth out of that cocoon, you know, which is also symbolic to, um, as we would say, that um, energy, you know, uh, that soul uh, life force energy coming up and out, being able to no longer be, just garbed within um, that pineal gland, which is symbolic to the linen um, and symbolic to the sepulchre. But now the soul is free in order to come forth, just like Jesus then was able to materialize and dematerialize at will now. Um, the soul is able to leave the physical body to materialize, in, an, in, in other words, they all incarnate into another body or be outside of the um, physical body and do what it needs to do from the spiritual realm. So. 
Um, these are the sciences in which that the occult teachings and the esoteric schools and the metaphysical teachers and practitioners understand and understand and understand. So um, we get ready to bring Brother Natural Tahuti on, and um, we get ready to drop it on y'all. So hold on a second. We get ready to bring him on. Right. All right, as we wait for them to come on, we're getting ready to um, continue on with the info. And um, we're going to drop it on you about the Mother Goddess Principle, which correlates to the Kotalini energy, which is that universal life force energy in which that formed everything in existence. And so there's nothing in which that exists, in which that you can see, touch, taste, smell, or hear in which that was not produced or created by via the Kotalini or the Mother Goddess Principle. And, of course, the women typify that and are the epitome of that particular energy and of that life force principle, all right? So um, Brother Nash Dahoudi is getting ready to drop it on you all concerning that um, science, all right? We're getting ready to pull them on in here in a minute, all right? Peace, peace. Hey, what's going on with you, God? All right, God. Be right here with you in the NY. <laughs> no question. No question. Um, I want to say peace to the listening audience. And at this time, my spirit is a little hurt at the moment, so I want to take, uh, have a moment of silence for our young brother, Trayvon. Okay. Now that we've had the moment of silence, um, I want to say, I'm, first of all, let me just speak on that real quick. I was very disturbed today because I actually heard the 911 call and I heard the gunshot and young brother Trayvon yelling for help. And I felt at that time, you know, I'm deeply connected with the mother. And I felt like a mother. I didn't feel like a father when I heard it. I felt like a mother. Like, you know, my child is being hurt, and I wanted to really lash out and do something about it, you know. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. But let me go straight in um, to the listening audience and those that have never heard me before. My name is Brother Natural Tahuti, a.k.a. the son of Sekhmet, a.k.a. the bad boy of consciousness. And a little bit about Sekhmet real quick. Sekhmet is... A sun goddess. First of all, let's understand that the term goddess is generic. I'm only going to use the term goddess for identification purposes for people who are not really comfortable with the concept, but the term goddess is very generic. I am not talking about any mythological stuff. I am talking about our actual mothers that walk the earth. Now, when you look at some of the ancient statues of her, you have to look at them in the light that that is a totem, if you understand what a totem is. Have you ever seen one of those old Hollywood shows and they was going to Africa and they were showing the totem pole? Well, the totem pole represents a tribe. It represents an ideology. It represents a people. And so when you're looking at these statues of the goddess, I want you to understand that this is not mythology. Well, for Europeans, it's mythology. For the feminist movement, it is mythology. But for us, the original people of the planet Earth, this is not mythology. I have to reiterate that. This is our actual mothers. So when you look at the statues, understand that the statue is only a totem that represents a group of people, a group or a matri of divine matriarchal of very powerful women. Now, when I say matriarchy, I don't only mean women because there were plenty of men who were involved in the matriarch. I am one of the sons of the goddess. You know what I'm saying? So I look at myself and they say, well, Tahuti, if the black, woman, the black African woman is God, if the Moorish woman is God, if the Nubian woman is God, whatever term you prefer, what are us men? Because, you know, what's happening is, is that we find ourselves here in the wilderness of North America, and as men, we are trying to assert ourselves. We're trying to reassert ourselves in a very violent civilization that is very patriarchal and man-dominated, you know, the same goes that, uh, uh, you know, it's a man's world, you know, and 
you know. So we're we really caught up in that. And as we're trying to assert ourselves in the white supremacy system, we try to emulate what the European is doing. And so, you know, we have to try to feel good about ourselves as men because, let's be honest, the white supremacy system beats down the man. But I want you to understand that the overt attack on the man is really a covert attack on the great mother's precious womb. You need to understand that it is a it's an overt attack on the woman's womb. And this is what we need to understand as men. We think because we are very powerful, and men are powerful. Yes, we are. But the woman is magical. She's very magical. We have to understand that because we have this very forceful, this testosterone, and it makes us a powerful being, we have to understand that we was not bred under that kind of system. That is a system that is European in in, 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 in its nature. You see what I'm saying? And it's really outside of the realm of nature. You understand what I'm saying to you? Nature reflects a matriarch. What is a matriarch? Most people think that Matriarchy is the opposite of patriarchy. It's not, if you look at it from the etymological standpoint. From the etymological standpoint, the word matriarch is an acronym. It comes from two words, matri, and it also comes from the word aki, which means, matri is Greek, that means mother, and aki means beginning. So we're not talking about a, 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 a paradigm where women are ruling in the sense of the European definition of the word rule, but we are talking about everything begins with the mother. Now, when you go into the word patriarchy, patriarchy literally does mean male rule because the word patri is a word that literally means father, but it doesn't mean the father of a child. No, that would be the word daddy. Father in the sense of rulership in a political sense, father God, uh, head statesmen, this is how the word came about. And so you have the word patri or kata, right, which it, it also derives, you can take it all the way back to Kemet, to the word pata. So, you know, and when you look at pata, you will see that pata is actually a male representation of the great mother. He is the only male god with the womb around his neck. So we have to really understand these, these concepts is that, yes, there is the father, but the father is really the son of the mother. Now, I know that kind of doesn't make sense to you, but if you began to do the research and understand, even in the word man, man is not the male. The man is actually the one who has the breast and the womb because the man is the species. Man does not mean male. And then when we go into the etymological origin of the word, the word man in the Old Norse would come from the word wer, which is W-E-R, which has its origin in the um, Sanskrit, which is the word ver, V-I-R, and it means were, like werewolf. And werewolf is a symbol of the moon, which was associated with the great, again, I'm using the term goddess, for clarification so that you can identify with this concept. But I, the reason I tell you that the word goddess is generic is because goddess denotes secondary. So even though you'll hear people in the Afrocentric movement say, yeah, the black man is God and the black woman is the goddess, it still is denoting that the woman is secondary. And we have to get away from that concept because she is not secondary. She is the beginning of everything, matriarchy, mother beginning. Everything begins with the mother. Even in the old ancient scripts in the metal metal Genesis where Amen says, I was alone and I created myself. There's a part in there where he says when he began to realize himself. See, he didn't realize who he was at first. But when he began to realize himself, he said that he was my not, that he had came from his mother. You understand what I'm saying? So it is the mother that comes first. And even for the great God, Amen, he comes from a mother. Everything comes from a mother. A lot of times people try to say, okay, child, holy, well, that is good in a physical sense, but in the, the uh, metaphysical sense, that don't make sense. 
You see what I'm saying? They say, well, the mother is that which is in the realm of that which is being seen, and the father is in the realm of the unseen. But I tell you literally that the father that is in the realm that is unseen comes from the mother that he derives from, and that which is unseen has breast in a womb. Now, if you go into the etymology of some of these words, like in the um, in the Hebrew, you have the word. Let me see if I can pronounce it right. Ruach, ruach. I think it's R U A. It means breath. It means spirit. Ruach. I mean, I'm pronouncing the word right. Ruach. And um, uh, if you go in Gerald Massey's books. He tells you literally that the word ruach is a feminine word, and I've studied it and how you know, because if you learn Hebrew, you'll learn that all of the words that end with A-H are feminine words. So the soul of a man is actually feminine. So this goes on to even say from what I talked earlier about man being a degenerate woman and the people were crucifying me because they say, oh, that sounds gay. Really, in all actuality, there is only one sex. We all come from one Sex, and that sex is the female. Man is the female. He's the masculinized female. Because when we go into the early conceptions of birth, the embryo, and, uh, and if you deal with embryology, then you'll understand that everyone began as the XX chromosome. We all began as a female, and even to to have a to grow a penis, it has to develop from the genital tuber. The genital tuber, otherwise known as a clitoris, is just an elongation of the woman's clit. And if you don't believe that, all you've got to do is go home and look up under your legs and see that you have scar tissue. You have scar tissue, which originally was a womb. And so that's the reason why we still have these two buttons on our chest as reminders of who we come from. We all come from the mother. So man... Is a, it is still honorable for us to be the son of the mother. It's still honorable for us to be the son of God. You understand what I'm saying? You, so um, the, all of these things have to do is really for you to just take out the emotionalism and sit down and really hear the argument. Really sit down and be ready for some real science. You see what I'm saying? You, let's get away from, um, you know, this, this, this thing about... Um, um, well, we both came here at the same time. Or, no, it don't work that way. If we came here at the same time, then, I mean, I mean if, 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 if the womb came through the penis, well, how the hell did he do it? It, it don't make sense. I've seen penises come through wombs, but I've never seen a womb, I mean, a, a womb come through a penis. It just don't make logical sense. And if you want to deal with logic, that don't make sense. You see what I'm saying? So then the other arguments are whether, well, the egg and the sperm, I got the seed. Well, do you really have a seed? I mean, if you look at the, the sperm, it looks like an egg with a tail to me because the nucleus of it is shaped like an egg, the same like your head is shaped like an egg, the same like your eyeballs are shaped like an egg, the same with the rotation of the planet. They move in an egg-shaped motion, the same with your... The electromagnetic field that is surrounding your body is an egg shape. You're in an egg shape. It's called an aura. Even sound. Sound doesn't travel in waves. It travels in a bubble. It's an egg shape. But when it crashes against the medium, then the little sperm-like waves come out. This gives you another understanding of what the sperm is. Think about a tadpole. It begins as an egg. Then it's a tadpole. Then it becomes a fish or a frog or whatever the case so when we look at the sperm, the sperm really is actually like a degenerate egg, you see. So, you know, it's going to take you some time to catch up with these concepts, but um, this is factual, it's actual, and it's science. It's science. If your philosophy, if your religion, if your history does not match natural science, then we really need to take another look at it. And just because it comes from mother continent Africa, just because there are Africans participating in it, don't think that that makes it correct because there are Africans who are patriarchal. As a matter of fact, patriarchy didn't begin with Europeans. It began with Africans. You see what I'm saying? Although uh, African women, uh, we have an ancient past, and originally they did not, they were the only women on the planet who did not come up under patriarchy, they came up under matriarchy. It was a group of Africans like the priesthood. The priesthood was corrupt. And so this is how patriarchy 
not only on, on Mother Continent Africa, not only in Africa, Europe, and also America, because it is false for us to think that we only came out of Africa. There's 12 trillion, 478 billion, 118 million, 400,000 inches on the planet. We've been on every part of it. You don't believe that? Even the name Europe comes from the goddess Europa. California comes from the goddess Kali. You see, so we were here in America, we were in Europe, we were in all of Asia, and we were in what we call the mother continent, Africa. You see what I'm saying? So we were on every part of the planet, and we were a matriarchal people. So the others say to me, well, how so is that? Brother, because if you understand spirituality versus religion, spirituality is the reflection of nature. You are born with spirituality. That's why it is, it is a natural thing that you're born from, from your mother, because spirituality is the motion of nature. It is the motion of life. It is life in its many, in its many forces, in its many um, diversities. You see what I'm saying? It is cosmogony. We have a cosmogony. Europeans have a dichotomy. And this is how we know that nature is the natural form of spirituality. So when you're looking at original indigenous peoples, no matter where their geological locations are, they are imitating what they learned from animals, birds, bees, trees, nature, the forces of nature, and all of those things. And when they began to realize those things, they began to understand that they were those things. Like, you know, we're just like stars in, covered in skin. You see what I'm saying? You And so this is why nature reflects matriarchy. I challenge anyone to show me a king bee. I challenge anyone to show me a king ant. You can't do it. There's no such thing. Even the hyena, the queen is the, she is the, is the matriarch. As a matter of fact, she has a clitoris that's bigger than his penis. You would think that when you look at the, 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 the clitoris of the, the female matriarch hyena, you would think it's a penis. It's bigger than his penis. So this should give you some understanding about life. When you deal with the elephants, the elephants follow, they all follow the leader of the pack. You know who the leader of the pack is? The matriarch, the oldest female lion. I mean, the oldest female elephant. And when she passes away, it goes to the next oldest one. And this is the way life is. So Although we are being brutalized, although we are being beaten down, we have to understand that we were not bred under this kind of this kind of system. We were bred under a matriarchal system. We always gave the mother reverence. She was always the first divine principle. Because of our loyalty to our mother, she crowned us the king. Even during hunting and gathering civilizations where men would go out to hunt, that man would give his life for that woman. And so when she realized that he would give his life for the woman, she crowned him. She, she loved him, and she crowned him, and they had a, a divine balance. I'm not talking about women over men. I'm, this is not what this paradigm is about. It's about the divine balance of things in life. You see, and then when the God was just talking about the Kundalini, well, it's a fact. We cannot even redeem ourselves as men except through the womb of the woman. It is through the womb of the woman that us as men have to redeem ourselves. Because I've heard a lot of the yogis talk about, well, you can meditate and you can do pranayama. But pranayama, the best that pranayama can do, and I'm not saying that this is not part of it. It is a part of it, but it is not the total system. Pranayama supplements the energies coming from the spine. It supplements the kundalini energy. The kundalini is the goddess herself. You see what I'm saying to you? And the only way to resurrect that goddess in you is through the womb of a woman. It is through ecstatic ecstasy. And that ecstatic ecstasy is through that womb of the woman. She is the fanner of the fire at the base of the spine. And when you go to all religions, all religion is based upon the fanning of the fire. When the Muslims say, La Allah, it Allah, there's no God but Allah. When they say, you must pray five times a day. Well, al Salat is wrongly translated. It doesn't mean come to prayer. It means to raise the fire. You understand what I'm saying to you? Right, the Raqqa. It means that raise that fire. The fire is at the 
face of the spine. What is that fire that is the mother principle? How say so? Well, the fire principle is the sun god, and that's the male. Well, the goddess Sekhmet, she is so old, she comes, they, she's so old, they don't even know when she came about. She is a sun goddess. You never knew that because you always thought that the sun was associated with the male. But when the woman is administrating, that is the fire. That is the fire principle right there through her ministration. You see what I'm saying? So she is not the inactive principle. You think because the woman has the negative principle that that's inactive. No, she is very active. Think about alkaline. Think about the alkaline charge. In order to have an alkaline charge, you've got to do what? You have to have a negative ion. So that negative ion is what alkalines your water. You understand what I'm saying to you? So we've got to get out of these concepts of thinking that the woman is just passive and soft and all of that. No, she's not to be equated with a man in the sense of testosterone, although um, there are, a uh, matter of fact, and I, as racist as this white boy is, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he admitted that women were physically stronger than men. They're just not being trained in that manner. They're just not being trained in that manner. But, um, I mean, let's think about it. The woman... Even in terms of longevity, the oldest people on the planet are women. The oldest people on the planet are women. So this is a concept that we must get back in tune with because it's a call for you to get back to nature. It's a call for you to get back to the ancestors. And in order to do that, we have to we got to humble ourselves. War and Killing and all of that—that's that's very European. Although we participated in it, and I believe that the fall of man literally has to do because we got away from the mother. When we got away from the mother, and when us men thought that we could do it better than the mother, we can do it without her because we were strong, we were powerful. When we thought like that, this is the reason why all original nations around the planet have fallen, and they are cursed. Now, this is not spooky. This is not spooky. But you need to think about this. Are you mean to tell me that the teenager, ninja mutant turtle from the cave of the Caucasus Mountain was that sophisticated, was that of a brute to be able to take down and conquer every civilization on the planet? Every original people on the planet has fallen. How the hell did they all fall? We've had civilizations everywhere on the planet. I mean, everywhere. There's 196 million, 940,000 square miles on the planet. And we've been every square mile of it. So in every square mile of it, how does every kingdom and queendom fall by the wayside? Was it through, was the European got, I mean, listen, there's a guy coming from out of the caves of Europe with no shoes on his feet. He didn't even build a house for himself. There's not one pyramid that he participated in building. So no mound, no, even the mounds that were built, the mound builders, the mound was a representation of the womb because it's a tomb. That's why the word womb and tomb, they rhyme with each other because it is the, 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 the tomb is a symbol of the great mother's womb. From the darkness of the mother's womb you came out of, from the darkness of the tomb you shall return. So... It's a, you know, it's a stargate. So we go in, we come out, we go in, we come out, you know. So this is the thing that we have to realize. So if what Brother Nasser Tahuti, uh, the son of Sekhmet, is saying to you begins to resonate and you begin to feel that little tingle inside of you, that's your ancestors. You were meant to hear this message because we are the returned gods and goddesses. They haven't gone anywhere. And guess what? You have a responsibility. You signed the contract, whether you know it or not. You chose the parents that you got. You chose to reincarnate at this particular time. Why did you choose to reincarnate in this particular time? There's one reason you chose to be here. Number one, to dismantle the white supremacy system. Number two, which is really number one, is to to to, to help put the great mother back on the throne. That is the reason you are here. There is no other reason. 
Your reason is not here just for you to get a Mercedes Benz. Not to say not to have one is not a nice thing, right? Because it's very convenient, it's luxurious. But that's not the reason you're here. To make a lot of money, that's not the reason you're here. Because guess what? They can stop making money anytime they want to. They just showed you that in the past few years. How many different new forms of money they just made? And they cancel out the last one. So they can easily take the money away from the civilization. So it's not about the money. They say money, power, and respect. But they don't respect you whether you got money or not. They still don't damn respect you. And Puffy and Combs and all of them got money, but do they respect them? Hell no, they don't respect them. They make them have ritualistic sex with one another. They make them dress up in dresses on stage in front of the world to, to, to soften our boys up. I mean, they don't respect them, so it's not money that's going to give you the respect. The only thing in this world that is going to give you that respect is when we begin to put our mothers back on the throne, we are going to have international respect. International respect because the Moors are correct. It is about nationality. Now, we can argue whether or not it's about, okay, I'm a Moor, or I'm a Nubian, or I'm a nigger, or I'm a Negro, or I'm a black. We can argue those things because that's just generic. But nationality is not generic. Prove that shit, Nancy Tahuti. The word nationality comes from the French word nation, which comes from the word NATO, which comes from the Greek word genus. It all means birth. So your nationality means that it's your birthright. You come from the mother that you come from, that is your birthright. You have nationality, it is your birthright. It is a part of your spirituality. Your nationality and your spirituality is one and the same. So the Moors are correct about nationality. Now, yes, it took me some time to get here, but guess what? I get the point now. I really do get the point. People are not damn crayons. We, 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 people on the international stage do not identify themselves as black or white. They don't do that. Not to say that there's anything wrong with the color black because all of the, 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 the ancient deities were colored in that, that blackness. It is divine. I'm not going to say that it is wicked, but in the operating principles of law as it is set up through these European courts, this is the trickery and this is how you know, they set us behind with one another. So these are some of the things that we need to begin to start taking a look at and to start incorporating these things into the argument. Like I said, we don't you don't have to call yourself a more because I think that we have a lot of different nationalities because Africans pretty much see themselves the same way Europeans see themselves. You got Germans, you got you got Greeks, you got uh you got uh, uh, Irish, and they pretty much looked at themselves the same way. That's why when they came over in Africa, it was pretty much harder to deal with because Africans were into this tribalism thing. And one had a wider nose, the other one had a sharper nose, and they would fight over these little differences. You know what I'm saying? So they looked at each other as these different tribesmen. So there wasn't really no cosmogony for the whole of Mother Africa. But in the more ancient of civilization, they did believe in the brotherhood of man and woman. They believed in that concept, and that's why you can find all over the planet Earth, you find a cohesiveness, even in the religions, because the religions are just a remake of the wisdom, the wisdom ways of our ancestors. Let me give you an understanding. The Muslims say, ma ihalah, ihalah, there's no God but Allah. The Christians say, this is... The Christians say the kingdom of heaven is within. The Hindu, which is 35,000 or 100 gods, has one primary god named Atman that lives in the heart, and they seek Atman. The Native American says the great spirit speaks to us from within. The Buddha says the great mind speaks to us from within. Do you see the cohesiveness of every one of these ways? Take away the dogma. Take away the dogma, and then you will understand that all of these sciences came from us. They all came from us. But we, we need to throw away some of the titles and just get right back to the spiritual the spirituality. And so and so claiming the mother and putting that mother first does not make you less of a man. It makes you a greater man. It makes you and I'm gonna use some hood terms, it makes you a goddamn sucker. 
to try to make yourself better than a woman. That's really gay. I hear these terms out here, niggas talking about M.O.B., money over bitches. Is that not gay? I just heard, let me tell you what I heard on the rap record. Y'all not listening. Oh, yeah, that's some gay shit. Yo, I heard, um, what's his name? Rick Ross said, Rick Ross said, um, loyalty, loyalty to my nigga. He said, loyalty to my nigga, never trust those hoes. Always pay your taxes, but never pay these hoes. So pay the white man who is suppressing you on your own land. Pay him, but don't pay the woman who actually is supposed to help raise you up. Mm, interesting concept. Wow, Not man. I like some faggot shit to me. That is some faggot shit if I ever heard it. You understand what I'm saying to you? Anybody that thinks that money is more important than women is a goddamn faggot. Come on. Let's, let's be honest, man. Yeah, let's be honest. That's the way I see it. You know, and so when we go back and we look at even Noble Drew Ali, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the father, Clarence Smith, 13 X, Marcus Garvey, all of them, in my opinion, knew about the great mother. I think that there was a process in our beginning. Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, man, 75% of the work was done with the woman. He said if there was no God, the only one that would be worthy well of worship is the woman. He said that Allah created himself from stages of triple darkness and that he created himself from the female portion of the universe. Noble Drew Ali carries a woman in his arms and on her body says the words humanity. And then in the one on ones he says, What was the purpose of the more science temple of America coming to America? For the uplifting of fallen humanity. So it means that when the unconscious woman becomes conscious, humanity will be saved. Because she is humanity. Don't you get that? Most honorable Elijah Muhammad said if you teach a man, you only teach an individual. If you teach a woman, you teach a nation. Don't you understand? So don't fight with your brother, Tyler Hootie, man. Even if you just, I don't give a damn. Because guess what? I'm going to stand on this like solid on a rock. And I don't care if I stand alone. I'm not in a popularity contest. And that's why I can stand alone and take all the abuse and the punishment of the people coming at my head. And I, aren't you, weren't you a 5%er? And you're here in the hub of the 5 percent in Harlem. You live in Harlem. And if you have gone this long without anyone trying to say anything or trying to attempt to denounce that you are right, you know what I'm saying, from, from actually from what woke me up, you know what I'm saying? I was 14 when I got woke up through the 5%. Or the nation of gods and earth. You know what I'm saying? You got woke up through them. So, I mean, this is just fact. You know what I'm saying? And they haven't been able to denounce anything which that you have stated so far in any of the lectures that I've seen, or even in the commentaries on 125th Street in front of the camera with Brother Saad Nutter. You know, so how you? what do you think about that? <laughs> I think people are just afraid to be themselves, man. You know, if you think about the father, and I love the nation of God, you know, that was my ideological foundation. I'm not warring against those brothers. I think they're just, they're just not needed. They're scared of, they're scared of their own sons because they're not being allowed to be themselves. They are afraid that if they say something that is not within the paradigms of the 120 lessons, that their peers, who they feel loyalty to, because I was trapped in that. I have to be loyal to the gods. You know what I'm saying? They feel that they want to be ostracized. But there has to come a time in your life where you have to become a man. You know, in the Bible, it tells you when you was a boy, you did what? You played with them. And when you become an adult, you have to... You put away childish things, man. You know what I'm talking about, people. And so you... If the father, Clarence Smith 13X, was not an independent thinker, there would be no nation of gods and earths. He would still be a Muslim in the nation of Islam. So that's one of the things that you have to understand. So, again, I need to reiterate, I'm not warring against the nation of gods and earths. I'm not warring against the nation of Islam. 
I am just setting a precedence. I am showing my independence. I am showing that this mind is a terrible thing to waste. And if you lock yourself into just one way of thinking, you're not allowing yourself to grow and evolve. And if you say you are a revolutionary, then you have to understand in the word revolution is evolution. And and speaking of that, um, when we think about, you know, um, Parker Jennings, and I know that you've gone over that before, and there's several books in which that verifies what you're saying. I mean, scientifically, based on the occult teaching, you know, let's get into some of that, you know, as far as the information that you have found. Okay. You know, and that way um, they have to go and do their own research. That way there won't be a debate with Brother Nasser Tahuti. They have to debate um, the information coming from the books. Well, um, people say parthenogenesis is, is fallacy. Well, first of all, let's just take it from a basic let's just take it from a basic point of view. It happens amongst animals. Then the argument becomes, Well, Tahuti, we're not animals. We're better than animals. When did we become better than the animals? First of all, number one, the animal shits, you shit. The, uh animal eats, you eat. The animal has sex, you have sex. The animal gets tired, you get tired, and guess what? If you kick a dog in his ass, he'll feel it. So you got feelings, the dog got feelings. And guess what? The dog understands you more than you understand the dog. As a matter of fact, when was the last time you understood the conversation between dogs? But God damn it, I can show you plenty of instances where the dog understood your conversation. Because you say, sit your ass down, the dog go over there and sit down. Go get me the newspaper, the dog go get the newspaper. Jump through this hoop, the dog jump through the hoop. But when was the last time you understand when the dog said, rah, rah, did you understand what the damn dog was saying? So what makes you better than the dog? Oh, dogs, she, uh, animals don't have souls. Who says so? Who says so? Where do you get these idiotic ideologies from? The dog has a damn soul. It wouldn't be a lie. All the soul is is the seed of consciousness. And what is consciousness? Consciousness is that all. That is the permeating reality that is behind all reality. You see what I'm saying? If there was no consciousness, then nothing would be animated. The dog would not even exist if it had no consciousness. It does have a consciousness. The problem is we don't understand its level of consciousness. And if I'm not mistaken, once again, that principle that you are referring to is the Kundalini, which is the mother goddess principle. So she exists within her own creation. Yes. Oh. Yes. See, we're on the same page. But getting back to this, so it occurs in... It, parthenogenesis occurs in animals. So let's talk about the woman. The woman has these strange vestigial organs called the apophoron and the ovarium, which are similar to the seminiferous tubules found in the testicles of man. These tubules found that are similar to man's testicles have been known to produce living spermatozoa. The fact that the woman has these strange vestigial organs that are similar to the seminiferous tubules found in man's testicles speaks infallibly of an ancient past. The other thing is they say, well, Tahuti, if there's no semen, how can the egg hatch? Or is the other argument, it takes 23 chromosomes from the man and 23 chromosomes from the woman. He is correct. Man does pass off 23 chromosomes but he passes off what is called nuclear DNA, which is the last-minute details, and that's why the child can come out looking like the father. But those are last-minute details, phenol features, the things like that. The woman has passing off what is the ancient information, which is the mitochondrial DNA, which goes back to the very origin of the creation. When the creation was created, mitochondrial DNA has the information from the very creation of things. So that's how far back that goes. And only she can pass it from mother to egg now. So that does not explain how the man has 23 chromosomes and the woman has 23 chromosomes. Where is she going to get the extra 23 chromosomes? Well, shit, that's simple. The woman has a polar body. Her egg has a polar body. The polar body has 23 chromosomes. Her egg has 23 chromosomes. All it takes is alkalinity of the blood in the egg to rub up against the polar body, and that is enough spark and friction for her to have a daughter. Now, there came a time when degeneration set in because all human 
animal, aqua addict, anything that is living on earth will degenerate because we're living on the outside of the planet. We don't live on the inside of the planet, which would preserve us more. We are vulnerable to the planetary influences. We are vulnerable to the atmospheric pressure. A damn virus, a microscopic virus can kill you. That's how vulnerable you are. Yeah, we are gods and goddesses, but guess what? There's a tree called the sequoia, the redwood. It lives 2,500 years. You can barely make it to 60 goddamn years. Talking about how big and bad you are. The damn turtle can live damn near 300 years in its life cycle. So this is why I say humble yourself and do some knowledge, get the science. So, therefore, I'm just showing you parthenogenesis still happens right to this day. The doctors don't talk about it. They are having children right now. You know what an ovarian cyst is? An ovarian cyst is a woman that got pregnant parthenogenically. However, women are degenerated these days, and so the babies, the children, the babies come out malformed. And sometimes they don't allow these so-called tumors to grow to full term. But there are cases, and I got photographs of whole skulls, vertebrae, umbilical cords, legs, feet. Can you explain that? Not only do they happen in women, check this out. It can happen in men, too. So tell me, Kahuli, oh, that's some homo shit. No, it's just a scientific observation. Even when I talked about men having breast milk, I wasn't promoting breast milk. I was just being condescending at the time. I just wanted to fuck with your ego because you think it's all about the man, and it's not. We, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me that the more wisdom a man obtains, the humbler he becomes. So I just did that just to mess with your ego, but it was a scientific fact. If you would have went and did the op, op, learnt and studied it, you would see that it does occur. Not that we are promoting that men should go out and breastfeed. No, I only showed it to you just to show you that the origin of life is the mother. Your human body was made inside of a female's body. So all the material of the mother that put this, that covered the spirit, came from a female's flesh. Not a man's flesh, a female's flesh. So your body is covered in the flesh of a woman. Therefore, only woman exists. Only, you understand? <laughs> so, you know, uh, these concepts may be a little bit hard for you to understand at the time. But I guarantee you, if you are a seeker of truth and you are sincere in your heart, the great mother will lead you to these truths. She led it to me. I was once, a, uh, uh, I'm telling you, I was one of the biggest male chauvinistic pigs. And because I started learning this stuff, man, it changed my life. It really changed my life, man. It was a spiritual awakening for me. And I, I'm just so grateful about the whole goddamn thing. There's a lot of gratitude in my attitude today. You understand what I'm saying? And I know as we are trying to assert ourselves, you know, you got some crazy-ass black women, but you got some crazy-ass black men too. Come on, let's be honest. We are all out of our minds. We're trying to find out what our nationalities are. We're trying to find our real spirituality. We're trying to assert ourselves as men. We're trying to assert ourselves as women. We are unbalanced. We are sick. That's what you have to realize. So stop fighting me. Don't fight me. Don't fight my brother, Arlene Bay. Don't fight none of us. We need to sit down, get rid of the ego. Because you know what the ego, now the ego has a purpose. But most times, when we're in ego, we are easing God out. We are easing God out. When you are living in the God principle, when you're living in the Christ principle, when you're living in the principle of the great mother, it is in your conscious mind, which is your heart, your heart chakra. And this is where real spirituality begins. And in order to do that, you've got to humble yourself, man. No light and no knowledge and wisdom will come to you if you continue with this arrogance, if you continue with this beating on your chest gorilla concept. You've got to humble yourself. You've got to humble yourself, and you've got to bow before the great mother. You've got to get reverence to the womb. It's just like when you see those kung fu movies. They bow before the master, before the master starts giving them, because that's giving reverence. 
That means that you respect the knowledge and the wisdom. It's not that you're bowing to the human being. You are bowing to the spiritual principles of God that is within the master. Because the master don't want you to bow to him or her for the purposes of self-aggrandizement. No, they are telling you to bow down to the God principle. You understand what I'm saying to you? So I hope that some of the things that I, I said tonight have touched a few hearts, have awoken a few people. You know, I humbly and sincerely am dedicated to this. And the moment that it, it started happening for me, I don't find any other thing in my life at this particular moment worthy of giving my all of attention. And this is why I have steadily stayed on the path. I want you to ask yourself a question. It is more popular and it is more rewarding for me to be down with the patriarch, with the brotherhood, with the boys club. I would get you know, I would probably be going further in my lectures if I was down with the boys club. Why would I take the unpopular position? of reverencing the mother, of saying all of these things about the woman where I'm being crucified, I'm being ridiculed, my name, my, my, you know, they say nasty things about me. Why would I take that position and never stop? You've got to ask yourself why. You think I'm trying to do this to get money? I've done about 10 lectures, and I got paid for about three of them, and even the money I got paid for them, I spent my money to get to those places. I'm getting ready to go down to Philly right now. You know how much money I just spent buying a new computer? I just bought the MacBook Pro. It cost me $1,300 plus the extra $100 to give to, to give to the white folks to teach me how to use it. You think how much money you think I'm going to make at the lecture? I did this because I want to bring quality to my people. I took my own money and go do this. It ain't about the money with me. It's because I love what I'm doing. I'm dedicated to the mother. When I tell you I'm the son of sick, man, that is my spirituality, man. I don't, I don't play with this, man. I truly worship the God. I truly worship the God. And I'm telling you, man, my life has been, I've been blessed. I don't like to say the word blessed. It means be less. I'm blessed today because today I, I'm, I'm beginning to process things in a whole other light. I'm beginning to process things in a whole other light. Because when you take this position, you, you start humbling yourself. And that is the only way to the kundalini. The only way to that kundalini, you've got to submerge the ego. That's why when you see the god, the god Shiva in the fire, he's dancing a ring of fire. And under his foot, there is someone. That someone is his own ego. You have to subdue the ego. All of the avatars that came on the planet, the Buddhas, there were 14, they, they don't tell you all the incarnations, but it was over 14 incarnations of the Buddha. But do you know what Buddha really is? And Buddha and Tahuti are the same. These were incarnations of Tahuti. Tahuti and Buddha are the same two people. Okay. And the reason what Buddha really means when they talk about oh, Buddha means enlightenment, you know what the enlightenment means? It means to subdue the masculine. That's what it is. When it tells you to, to you, in order to raise that kundalini, you got to subdue the masculine. You can't raise it up without subduing the masculine. You can't praise the goddess if you all this testosterone because you're not going to be able to see her in your arrogance. You're going to be blind to it. Did you ever heard of people bursting into a ring of fire? Yeah, this is real. This is not spookism. It's real. And you have to understand that we come from a very powerful, ancient matriarch. These women were magical. You know, we are powerful as men, yes, but the woman is magical. You see? And she taught us. The woman taught us her, her magic. And so you see Buddha and you see all of these Krishna and all of these avatars. Whether they physically existed or not, they represent a totem. That totem means that under that ideological principle, each and every man can actualize that particular concept in his life, and you become Tahuti walking the earth. So don't say that they didn't walk. They did walk the goddamn earth. First and foremost, art imitates life. Don't you see that all of the gods and goddesses are, are imitations of men and women? 
So they did walk the earth. Now, yes, they do represent ideological principles, esoteric principles. Yeah, they represent all of that. But it means that you are them. And all you have to do is actualize the principle, and that's who you become. Not even that you become. You already are it. It's just an unfolding. And that's why the lotus is one of the symbols, because the lotus comes, comes up out of the mud. And as it unfolds, it is one of the most beautiful plants in the world. And that's the same as the soul coming up out of the mud. And it unfolds. And the radiant goddess lives there. And so, yes, you are God. We are God. You understand? We just under, have to understand, as a man, I am the son of God. It's not dishonorable for me to be that. It's very arrogant for you not to. How can the mother, first of all, we all come from women. How is that the mother of civilization becomes the servant of her offspring? It <laughs> just don't make sense. It's slavery. That's a slave system. And so we need to get away from that. And so we have over a thousand-year curse here going on. This is a real curse. We have been cursed. And that's the reason why all original nations around the world have fallen down. And we haven't risen up yet. We haven't risen up yet. And you call the white man the devil and you call him all of this, but guess what? He's using your shit against you. He's using your shit against you, but he, he don't have, he can't actualize it the way you can. So he uses a portion of it through surgical magic. He uses it. You know what I mean? He uses your magic through surgical magic, and your magic turns on you. It's like the snake biting its own head off. You see? So the, he, he, and he, he gets you to use your own magic against yourself. He has no power over you. The only power he has over you is the trick knowledge, the spell that he can put you in. But the magic is you. You are the magic. It's not that white folks are using magic. No, they are making you use your magic against yourself. And that's the problem. You don't realize who you are. You don't realize the magic. You don't realize that your mothers are divine and they were some very powerful beings. You don't realize that. This stuff is hidden in the Bible. You say, well, the Bible is uh, all stripped up. That may very well be, but I guarantee you what? I guarantee you, if you go through that book, you'll find the truth in there. They have hidden the goddess in the Bible. They have hidden your divine mothers in that Bible. Where do you think they got the Old Testament from? They took it from the Sibyls, the prophetess. So, you know, again, I'm saying a lot of concepts and a lot of things, and, you know, I hope the listening audience has enjoyed what I talked about, and I hope that I've touched somebody's heart today. I hope that some man out there will begin to treat his woman better. I, I hope that some woman out there will begin to, number one, treat herself better and treat her man better. We do need each other. I'm not separating us. Black brother, original man, you are powerful. The reason why the old bird attack is on you because you are the first line of defense. You are the first line of defense, and they understand if I can beat you down, I have access to the Stargate. Go back and watch that movie Stargate. <laughs> They're telling you. With access, if I can beat down the first line of defense, I got access to the Stargate. And anything that comes under that Stargate, I'm going to manufacture as a slave. This is the God honest truth, man. This is powerful. I have nothing to gain. You think I want P-U-S-S-Y? Man, I never had that kind of problem. I'm a handsome brother. I know how to talk. Women like me. Stop it already. Stop it. But they bring up these arguments because they don't have nothing to fight against this truth that we're talking about. No doubt, no doubt. We got a question coming from area code 314. Area code 314, you're on the line. How you doing, brother? Good to speak to you. You're doing good. Hey. doing good. You got a question for um, my man, Brother Natural Toad? Um, yes, actually I have a question for both of you. It's um, partially related to your topic tonight. Basically, it's regarding the Kudalini energy and astral projection. 
Uh, from time to time, I have experiences where I actually project. But I noticed that um, basically, you know, how it's the different levels. You have the low, the mid, and the higher levels that you can go to. Um, a problem that, that I've been encountering is that sometimes when I go to the higher levels and I'm coming back down, and I become basically more so conscious of uh, or aware when I'm in the mid levels. And one thing that I face, or a couple of things that I face, is um, basically, <laughs> it might sound a little crazy, but um, helicopters and um I guess you would say extraterrestrials or beings that say in a non-physical place on the earth. Basically, the problems I've been having is like in these astral projections. It's like I run into these helicopters. I know they're representations of what's going on in the real world, but they're giving off some type of energy signature to, through my astral body that affects how I think and how I feel. And I've had this problem once or twice before, and that's all I've had occurrences where, like, these extraterrestrials I'm actually projecting, I'm coming back down to the mid-levels, and they somehow trap my astral body into, like, this type of, I guess you could say, metaphysical machine. It's like they're entering some type of program into my energy body so I can manifest whatever they're inputting into me when I wake up in my physical body. I wanted to know how can I use my mind and how can I use my kundalini energy to protect myself when I'm transferring from the higher realms through these middle realms while I'm open to these attacks. Do you want to answer that, Brother Alim, or? Yeah. Um, well, number one, when you leave outside your body, you have to learn how to garb yourself with white or either gold light. That way that acts as a form of protection. The gold light is good in order for protection and healing, and the resonation of it actually keeps away negative entities, and white light repels negative entities. So you will have to go up yourself like that. So as you come out of your body, you have to visualize yourself in white light, um, you know, or at the gold light, and that's the way was that you protect yourself when you go on the astral plane. If you're not doing that, then, yeah, you might become um, uh, susceptible to those types of um, things, you know, because you're talking about um, being open to those type of beings, you know, especially in the first and second overtone level of the, um, of the um, astral plane. Um, also, you will want to resonate at a higher. Learn the soul travel to the astral projection. All right? Soul travel happens from the top of the crown of the head as compared to astral projection, which only happens from the solar plexus. Mm. Okay? So so, so you will want to learn how to um, soul travel. So start looking up, um, go to Google and start looking up um, the signs of soul travel and learn how to soul travel instead, and that way you won't have to worry about those lower entities messing with you because you'll be above anything which that they uh, will um, try to come with uh, when you soul travel. In soul travel, you go into all um, seven multi-dimensions or what is known as the seven planes of existence from the physical to the um, ethereal, astral, which is the emotional, the mental, the causal, the uh, spiritual, and the soul. All right, you can go to all seven of those planes of existence and more um, as a soul traveler. However, you're stuck um, on the astral plane as an astral um, traveler or astral projector. So you you want to go outside of just one plane of existence, okay? Okay. All right. All right, and um, mm -hmm. I guess um, thank you. And um, also, I'm I'm gonna put that to use, but um. I guess you say, like, I know, also know one of the reasons I'm, like, I guess I transfer through those middle realms or those lower realms is, like, I just know for, like, my intuition that I'm supposed to help be, like, a a guardian or a protector or, you know, something of that nature. So that's, like, I understand everything that you're saying. I'm going to definitely put that to you so I can go and learn from the higher realms. But, like, also part of what I'm supposed to do is basically I'm supposed to help clean up the lower and the middle realms. You know, that's, like, part of the reason that I'm here. That's also, like, part of the reason why I'm drawn to those areas. But it's just, like, I'm I'm using that gold light and the white light, you know, but it's just, like, it's also I'm, I'm going to have to go there because, you know, it's part of what I'm here to do to help clean up those realms. But it's, it's, well, I mean, that's just, but still you have to protect yourself in the process, and that's just one of the ways in order to do it. You know, and you can still clean up the realms as being a soul traveler, not as an astral traveler. So that if you need to, you can go into the higher realms and leave those um, entities over that is stuck to that realm um, in their stuckness or in their bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, when we leave the physical body, you're still dealing with the same nonsense, you know, in which that was perpetrated even here on the physical plane. 
You know what I'm saying? So you still have the same jealousy, envy, hatred. Same type of people exist or beings exist on the um, astral plane as they do um, on this physical plane. Because they um, just because they one level up from this plane. So I mean, there is no difference. So you want to be able to protect yourself when you um, astral travel. You know, like I said, if you go into the higher realms, you won't even have to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it might be your job in order to um, clean up the lower realm, you know, or the mid realm, and you can still do that as being um, um, being of higher light um, and higher expression. All right. All right. Thank you, brother. I appreciate All right. it. All right. Peace out. Peace. Peace. Yeah, that was powerful, man. Yeah. I gotta take a look at that. I know when I used to do the um, practice called SOL. Um, me and a brother from a Gnostic, um, we were sitting there. He was a Gnostic. He was a Dominican brother, and me and him was doing some meditation. And um, we used to do a practice called SOL. It means subject, object, and location. And the more you were conscious of the subject you were dealing with, the object and your location in your waking realm, the more you would be conscious in that astral realm. And so when you got to the astral realm, um, also you have, you have a sword. You have a lightning sword, and you have to consciously, while you're in your waking realm, you have to consciously draw it in your mind. So when you get to that realm, you can easily access it. And there are different classrooms you can go to. You can fly. You can go to any classroom from any particular time period because in that in the astral realm, in those other realms, there's no right space-time continuum. So if you're conscious in your waking room, Say you're only conscious maybe uh, an hour in your real wake room. When you're in there, well, most people are not even that conscious in the wake room. Maybe a minute or two of the day, you're really conscious. And the rest of the day, you're just walking around sleepwalking. Well, when you're dreaming and you're in those rooms there, you it seems like it's hours or days that you're in that room, but it's only maybe a second or two. You see, but the more you become conscious of this room, the more you become conscious in that room, the more work you can do. And so what we would do is also when we would meditate, when we slowly came out of our meditation, we would pull on our index finger, and we would imagine that it was being pulled long because in your astral room, it's a, it's a body that is made up of mist. And so when you pull it, you can shape the astral body into anything you want. You can, you can actually... Um, what is that they call um, shape shift? You can shape shift in that room. You can do a lot of different things in that room. But um, that was powerful because I, I think the buff knows a lot more about that than me. So definitely though. But I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with it. So because in my early training uh, many years ago, um, I was dealing with a lot of those concepts. A lot of people think I'm one dimensional, but I'm really not. So, you know, um, I mean, is there anybody out there that would like to question? Um, they have a question, question in the um, chat room. It says, I'll be trapped here on this earth, hell, or time. Somebody was asking, I'll be trapped here. Um, you know, uh, I would say my spill on it. No, you aren't. That's why I was just talking about soul travel, which is that you are able to go to all of the astral planes or the various planes of existence or dimensions or density levels or realms. Um, that means planetary realms also, you know, because planet or cosmic zones in which that, like, for example, um, Venus is a fourth dimensional state, Pluto is a fifth dimensional state, and so each planet symbolizes a particular um, state of existence. So you as a being who mastered that portion of yourself can actually travel to those various cosmic zones. All right, so no, you're not trapped. Um, right. This is called hell. You know what I'm saying? And hell is actually um, a Greek word in which that symbolizes the afterlife. <laughs> so when you talk about hell, you actually are talking about the afterlife. You know what I'm saying? And it could be the life in which that you came from to earth, which this is the afterlife. I mean, why else would you taught as a child in kindergarten, um, life is but a dream. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Merry, merrily, merrily, life is but a dream. You know what I'm saying? So this is the dream world. Um, here condensed, but you can actually take all the, the material, astral material from the dream, from the um, other dream worlds, and actually condense it here in order to transform this world into the reality in which that you want. Being that it is an apparent illusion, all right. So you can make this a reality. You can make this into what you want it to be. 
you know, but it's talking about the mastering of these astral um, existences or these astral energies, which is the Kundalini itself. The Kundalini is what makes all these various worlds and conditions. Like we say, she created creation from out of herself. She became the sun. She became the moon. She became the star. She became the planet Earth. She became the earthlings on Earth. She became all of these things, all right? She resonates from your head to your toe, all right? Your very existence is Kundalini. However, her special bone within you is the um, sacral bone area, which is called the base of the, um, of the spine, at the base of the root chakra, all right? So she is you. So when we're talking about the mother goddess principle, we talk about it from that aspect. Don't get the genders twisted because right. you know that's how, um, you know, brothers um, like to roll because they are so subconscious and so insecure about their masculinity. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you might have been molested or whatever the case may be back in the days or whatever, but that's something that you have to handle on your own through your psychological conditioning and helping, you know what I'm saying, uh, from getting out of those particular states. You can't disrespect or hate the woman because of something which that happened to you. You know what I'm saying? Or the women hate the men. You know what right. I'm saying? Because that's still all lynch, um thing in which that, in a religion, tells you that they was going to freeze the woman and the mother was going to effeminize the male child and then make the female child independent of the male. So this is all part of that same nonsense. The only way that we can break out of it is by doing what Natural Tahuti was just talking about. You know what I'm saying? And I have to tell the truth of the matter. These are facts that we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? You can get the books by um, Secrets of Regeneration by Hilton Otema. That's one. Great place to start at. Right? right? Now, if you get all of his books, Hilton Otema, H I T O N, um, yeah, H I L T O N, Hilton Otema, H O T E M A. All right, so you can get all of his books. In particular, that's that um, like I said, that Secret of Regeneration, which that goes into the pathogenesis and, and all that information. And there was a debate that he had. He had a debate with one of our eminent um doctor, a prominent doctor, Shelton. Um, yeah, it was his yeah. name. No, he had Shelton. a debate with Shelton. He and he was a homopathist homopathologist and all of that, and he debated him over the subject of parthenogenesis, and the name of the book is called Virgin Birth. Get that book. That's the debate right there, and Hilton whole team of smashed it. He won, <laughs> he won a debate over the doctor, so get that book, and now they talk about, you know, the degenerated man, and, you know, woman is also degenerated, but she is more closer to nature than you are because she's still in her more in her original form. You understand what I'm saying? We have transformed into the sun. You see what I'm saying? It's not a bad thing, but but it was a necessity, a necessity out of what was going on with the formation of this planet and the exactly. dichotomy and the parallel and the, what appears to be opposite. It's an apparent opposite. It's not. It's complementary. We complement each other. Right. So, I mean, this has to take place because we are in what appears to be a duality. Right. That's the divine paradox. That's what it is. Because we're multiple, we're multidimensional beings. So, I mean, come on. It, it's got to make sense. I mean, does a homorphodite make sense to you? So, come on. If there is the existence of homorphodites, then it, it shows you that we come from an ancient past and it all began in the feminine principle. No doubt. If I'm not mistaken, um, all of us were feminine for three to six months inside of the womb until the woman was able to produce enough testosterone in order to transform that embryo into a masculine seed. Right. You know, so this is what Natural Tauri was talking about, is that we got that little soul up area up underneath from the um, top of the um, shaft of the penis all the way down to the anus area. That right. was the opening. Actually, the perineum was the opening. Right. You know, and you can, still feel that, you, you can still feel that indenture to this very day. Brother, if you don't believe me, really? just go right up on your nut sack and in between your anus area and feel the indenture. That was your vaginal canal, nigga. If you're having <laughs> sex, a woman can put her finger in that and make you come. Yeah. 
or to, stop you from or, coming. Or stop you from coming. That's and right. there is an exercise called, is it PCs or PCs? And you strengthen it up, and it, and it, it gives you a stronger erection and a stronger orgasm. You strengthen the prostate gland. Strengthen, right. Strengthen the right. prostate gland. Right. Right. right, exactly. All right, so these are the sciences that we need to know. All right, so uh, let me see if there's, um, let's see what else we have here. Do we got any questions? No, we don't have any questions at this time. Let's see if we got anything in the chat room. Yep, Hilton O Team of Secret of Regeneration. Yes. Um says what was the other book mentioned? The other book was called The Virgin Virgin Birth. Birth. The Virgin Birth. Right. Yeah. By Doctor Shelton and Hilton O Team. It was that debate between them. I think you said not not Shelton, right? Yeah, his name is Shelton. Yeah. 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 Can't think of his whole name, but Shelton, he was uh, a lot of them used uh Phil Valentine uses a lot of his material. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he recommended it all to his students to buy his book. And Hilton Old Team had debated him, he won that debate. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, that was the um last of the questions. All right, let me see. Somebody was asking the questions that what about the facts about polygamy or polygamy? What you got to say any on um on that? I'm not opposed to the ideal of polygamy, but also understand polygamy, polygyny and um polyandry. Because in a matriarchal society a woman has free sexual freedom. She does have sexual freedom, so it's okay. Understand this now. What's good for the goose is also good for the gander. Don't be, uh, if you have two or three wives, hey, why she can't have two or three husbands? So understand if you want to get into that system that it's also good for her if she wants to have two or three husbands because in a matriarchal civilization, the woman has absolute sexual freedom. There was never no um, um, putting restrictions on her sexuality. So, but in the interim of that, um, it was told to me that it was a system that was created by the woman in the first place because man has a lot of psychological problems because of the fact that he is always more women than there are men. And in order to balance out the civilization, a lot of times the woman had put him in the center of the civilization to alleviate his psychological psychosis of alienation. Because that's why that's why we go to wars and all this because we this alienation we we have to assert ourselves because of the testosterone the testosterone unchecked these chemicals create causes us to go and kill and fight and hurt one another but that is the, the opposite of our spirituality which makes us want to love and have understanding for all things on the planet which is based in the feminine principle. So the masculine, this is why these initiation systems were created so that the divine masculine could initiate into the realms of the dark feminine and subdue that masculine energy, and he became one with the mother. You see what I'm saying, you? But not to get around your questions of uh, polygamy. I polygamy. thought I thought that explained it perfectly, personally. You know, um, I mean, that's just that's just the fact of the matter. You know, um, someone asked another question, well, what about homosexuality? Homosexuality is very misunderstood, and please don't take me wrong because I can see it now. They'll be making a video, and they're going to be dubbing this tape when I say what I'm about to say. They're going to dub this and probably make crazy videos on me. But homosexuality is something that is very misunderstood, in the highest realm of homosexuality, it is called brotherly love. I'm not talking about sexuality. I'm not talking about men having sex with one another. The spirit of it is loving your brother. It has a perverted essence when men began to seek out other men to have sex with. That is the perversion of what homosexuality is. The higher essence of it is called brotherly love. There's nothing wrong with loving a man. That's your brother. That's what we're all about. It's about loving your brother. Because if we don't love our brothers, then you know what we are subject to do? We're going to hurt him. We're going to kill him. And this is what men do. So don't get me wrong. I don't claim to have all the answers about homosexuality because I don't understand it in its totality. But this is what I do have to say about it. 
In the beginning of the day, I'm a humanitarian. In the end of the day, I'm a humanitarian. All people, no matter what their color, creed, or sexual identity, they have a natural inclination to survive and thrive. And no matter whether the man is black, white, or candy striped, spotted or dotted, they have a right to live on this planet Earth because they are all creations of the great mother. And even if a person is homosexuality, they do have a right to live. It's not right for me to say, you goddamn homo, I'm going to kill you. That would be like me taking my retarded son and saying, because you're retarded, I'm going to kill you because I don't understand you. I don't understand homosexuality, and I'm not promoting it, but at the same time, as a spiritual warrior, I am a spiritual warrior. I have to have tolerance for all sentient beings on the planet Earth. Whew. Boy, I'm telling you, uh, I think that answered the question also. There's <laughs> not yeah. too much that can be said from that. I mean, um, when you look at it, you talk about energy. Now, even within the Greek terminology, there was three different words for love. You have cilio, which that's what the brother is talking about, but Brother Nash Taoudi is talking about brotherly love, that's filio. Then you have agape, that's the homosexual love in which that we're talking about, in which that became perverted from the filios, all right? And then you have the epic um, love in which that is talking about for humanity or for mankind. So we're talking about um, love, period, but you're talking about it in its true essence of spirituality, which is the kundalini. Kundalini is love. Anytime that you shower yourself with, um, with love, you know what I'm saying, whether it's from a person, you know, whether it's from male or female, I'm saying that is kundalini. You know what I'm saying? Now, the problem is is that we talk about homosexuality in this sense. According to my grandmaster, Sonyata Seyaswati, the energies within the body of a homosexual flows, um, like, for example, within the male, it flows up from the perineum, up the front of the body and down the spine. That is not the way that the energy is supposed to flow. Mm. Naturally, the energy is supposed to flow from the perineum up the spine to the top of the head, down the front of the body. That's called the conceptual and the governing vessel. And that's the way that it's supposed to flow within the males. Within the women, the energy flows up the front of the body and down the spine. So a homosexual male has the exact same energy flow as the woman. However, it can be corrected through what is called kundalini activation. It was that actually you can actually mark up the spine 13 times and actually cause the kundalini to raise up the spine in this opposite direction, in a proper direction, and come down the front, and that will make him lose the tendencies of homosexuality. Now, is that something in which that a homosexual will want? There are some homosexuals who do want to be simply masculine in this incarnation. But because of experiences in which that took place as children, such as we stated, child molestation, whatever the case may be, they become curious or they think that this is what they're supposed to be doing, all right? So we're looking at things out of curiosity. We're looking at things out of circumstances and events, all right? Would that naturally be like that? Nine times out of ten, no. But for those who are, there are ways in order to help correct that situation. And as Master Tawudi said, you know, um, we have to be tolerant of all sentient beings, period. You know, and that's a form of love. You know what I'm saying? When we are tolerant, you know, and we have some type of understanding or try to have some type of understanding of what is actually going on um, within the individual. Okay? So, um, that is one of the things that says, let me see. All right, someone was asked about her math today. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Missy was saying, I wasn't asking a question about the homosexual thing. She said she was saying, is that the hermaphrodite common? I was saying yes, it is very common in insects and animals as well as homosexuality in insects and animals. Oh, so that's what she was saying. Oh, well, well, you know what? The well, spirit think, led us to say yeah, that. I think, I think that's was, that's it was something that needs to be said because we have this um, <clears throat> this feelings of alienation again, and we have these really warped concepts about what's going on on the planet, and we're very intolerant of other human beings. And, again, that is the sickness of what racism is. Racism, first of all, let's understand there's no such thing as race. Race is a term that is a misnormal because what is a race? Oh, race is a competition. 
Are we in competition with one another? Well, we have been put in competition with one another. And this is something that has been created from the male paradigm. This has been created from this overabundance of testosterone. We are lashing out with one another. We're being intolerant in one another. We hurt one another. We say nasty things to each other. I can take a knife and pierce your skin and kill you. We're so vulnerable on this planet. So, yes, we need to talk about homosexuality. It happens. We have children who are homo. And I don't care how Afrocentric you are. I don't care how Moorish you are. I don't care how nation of Islam you are. That ain't going to stop your child from being a homosexual or a lesbian. I mean, we're up against a monster machine. This machine does not care who you are. It does not care about your color. It does not care about your nationality. It doesn't care about your religion or your spirituality. It cares nothing about that. It is totally selfish. It is totally for itself. It don't care about its own offspring. It will chew you and eat you. This machine has been created, and it thrives off of blood. It thrives off of human lives. It thrives off of the spirits of people and to keep them in prison. We are the gods and goddesses of this planet, so we have to begin to evolve in our thinking. And we need to be tolerant of the things that we don't understand so that we can get some understanding, begin to overstand, so that we can understand. No doubt about it. And um, we had another question here in which that was asked. Um, having too many orgasms killing us is having too many orgasms killing us? <laughs> I think it's the releasing of the semen. It's not the orgasm in itself because the orgasm in itself, every time you're having an orgasm, let me tell you what you're doing. You're touching faces with the divine. You know what Sama, you ever heard of Samadhi? Samadhi is a state of a constant orgasm. It's an orgasm in your body, it's in your thinking, it's in your way, it's in your action. You're in a state of bliss. Imagine that. You know when the Muslims say when you die you go to heaven, you're going to have all of these virgins? Well, that's just a degener- right, That's just a degenerated way of saying samadhi. You see what I'm saying? It's a degenerated way of samadhi. You understand what I'm saying? You? So it's not the orgasm in itself. It's the releasing of the semen all of the time. It's the releasing of the kundalini energy. Because when, when, as the kundalini is beginning to raise up the body, as it raises up the spinal column and floods the chakras, as it gets to the top, it, there's an earning to release it. There's a real strong earning to release it. If you learn not to release it, what happens is you become stronger. Then all of a sudden you start to heal. Your body becomes healing. Then all of a sudden you start having sight beyond sight. One the twin powers activate, man. This shit is real. If you raise that kundalini up the spinal column seven times, that is called a baptism. That is what the real baptism is. In the Bible they say, when thy eye becomes one, the whole body shall be filled with light. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about the kundalini. They're talking about the great mother. You understand what I'm saying to you? So it is not actually the orgasm because in the tantra yoga, that's what ecstatic, the only thing that can really raise that kundalini up is called ecstatic ecstasy. That ecstatic ecstasy is done through the breaking what's called Brahmin's knot, and that is through sex. Don't let no one fool you. It is through sex. It is through the womb of the woman. The womb of the woman will fan the fires. They say Mother Debbie will fan the fires up the spinal column. So, but it is not the degenerated form of sex where we're releasing the energy, we are actually harnessing the energy so that it can raise up, so we can use it for magic, and we can use it to free ourselves from the bodily impediments. Powerful, powerful. I see my man, Coach Kaye, is in the house, um, in the room, and um, he's breaking it down for y'all also. And um, like he said, um, men and women are not equal in that regard. Um, Men have... Um, young energy and women have yin energy, and young energy is more finite, and the woman's energy, which is yin, is more infinite. So in that regard, you know, um, the man definitely have to be careful about his um, ejaculation. He had to learn the science as natural child. He was talking about ejaculation, as well as also um, learning how to raise that energy up the spinal column through the ejaculation in order for that sperm to be baptized in the third school or from 
um, John the Baptist or Enku, as we would say, um, or Anubis. Um, so these are things in which that we definitely have to um, master. All right, so um, let's see if we got any questions here. That was in the chat room. They were giving some good questions. Um, Brother Coach Kaez was talking about masturbation causing 301 diseases in us, Ooh. right, um, that we don't even know of, that we don't even know of. Um, now, now, that's deep. That's deep. You know, um, now, that's if you just ejaculate and with no rotation or microcosmic or macrocosmic um, rotation and the raising up of that Kundalini, of course. This is just a person who's just ejaculating just for the hell of it. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. And, of course, as we said before, uh, one tablespoon of semen has enough protein of new, of two New York House quarter steaks, um, six oranges, eight eggs, two cups of milk, and two lemons. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's plenty of, um, of life force within that one semen, a tablespoon of semen. So if you're doing this on a daily basis several times a day, then, of course, you're losing your life force. Now, according to Stephen Chang, he states in his book, Dial Sexology, that it would be times two, your age. So if a person is 20 times two, it would be four days. If he can ejaculate without losing his life force. If it's um, five, you know, if they, I should say, if they um, 30, then that would be six days. If they 40, it'd be eight days. If they 50, it'd be 10 days. You know, so they would have to um, pattern themselves in that way in order not to lose their life force. And, of course, you know, learn the science of um, of Tantra Kriya Yoga. You know, learn the science, as um, Brother Natcha Tahuti was just talking about, learn the science of Qigong and Tai Chi in order to help um, bring energy into your reservoir, you know, into your lower dantian or what is called your sperm or your ovarian palace in order to store that energy there in order to um, make yourself more alive. You know, these are the sciences that we have to all learn, all right? Uh, let's, let's go to these lines here and see who's on. All right, we got a question from 321, area code 321. You're on the line. Hey. Area code 321. Hello, hello. Yes, Yes, how you doing? All right, we're here. Hey, hey. Yeah, um, I want to know because at first, the the way that I believe that it was um, done is uh, we know that we we didn't always look the way we look, right? So what I'm what I was thinking was that we split, right? So so. Can you explain that further as to how it it, it it didn't happen that way? Well, real quick, yeah, both sexes were part of one. It, it, that's true. Um, and brothers, a lot of people say, well, that's neither man nor woman. Well, that's not really correct. The woman had, if you look at a woman now, she has a clitoris, right? So she really has a penis, a uh, breast, and a vagina. So it was always... Like I said, the word man doesn't mean male. So the original man was the homophagite. There was a degeneration, and when, the, when, when they both split, the first one that appeared was the woman. She was the first one that appeared. And how do we know that? Actually, modern science did a research, and they, they took, uh, I think it was 1,500 or so many people and they tested the DNA. They tested her mitochondrial DNA and they were able to trace back all females, matter of fact, all humans back to a single female to about 200,000 years ago. Now, when they traced it to man, they called her uh, mitochondrial Eve, right? Doesn't mean that she, that was the first human being. It was the most recent human being because what happens is, there's a degeneration. So that doesn't mean it was the first human being because it, it goes way further back than 200,000 years. But the, the most recent common ancestor was 200,000 years ago, and that goes back to a single female. Now, when they trace back the males, uh, 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 what do they call the patrilineal, the, uh, what they call patrilineal uh, uh, Adam, 
they traced his DNA back, and it only went back to about 60,000 years. So we know that this was a fact. Not only that, when you look at the X chromosome, the, it, all you got to do is look under a microscope. Look under a microscope, and next time I want you to take a look at the painting or the statue of the goddess Aset and look at the god Heru. You'll never see a saw in that picture. You'll never see a big grown man. You'll always see a big grown woman and a little baby. Next time, I want you to go look at the DNA, look at the X chromosome, and look at the Y chromosome. That's mother and son. That's a saw and a set. I mean, excuse me, that's a set and hey, rule. When you look at the, the X chromosome, it's fluffier. It has what's called euchromatin. That's this fluffy little hairs that's all over it. It has regions. The regions are longer and more multiple. It's about six regions on each leg. Go look at the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is crumbled up. It don't even have that many regions to it. And so when you think about that in terms of mathematics, the male doesn't bring that much to the table. You see what I'm saying? You So it shows us, being that the woman has these two X chromosomes, that one of us was around a lot longer than the other. That's what it shows. Because the X, the Y chromosome, it's showing a degeneration. As a matter of fact, the woman has about 1,498 genes to the man's 70 genes. This is science. Don't be emotional and don't be upset. You're still a man. You're still the king. Don't worry about that. Just understand who we are and what the pecking order is, so to speak. I hope that answers your question. Oh, yeah, it definitely answers something there. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I heard a brother. I'm not going to – I heard a brother, right? He was saying that – it is only the European male that has uh, X and Y because he says that the the X chromosome, I mean the Y chromosome, is def- uh, deficient. So, w- what do you think about that? Uh, I heard. I heard. And I don't want to mention that brother's name. That's not yeah. true. That's not true. They have X. And, first of all, let's understand. When we say that the white man is the devil, I understand that is a generic term as well. Because the word devil really was a term to vilify the great mother. The word devil really means goddess. Just take the, take the D off of it. I mean, excuse me, take the L off of it, and you got the word devi, which means goddess, the diva. You understand what I'm saying? Diva, it also means women. You see what I'm saying? So don't worry. The word devil is a generic term. What are Europeans? They're light-skinned Africans who have degenerated to the fifth degree. That's all they are. They are degenerate, and because of degeneration, we experience the disease of mind, alienation. Even Africans felt strange when they were giving birth to these albino children, so they didn't know what to do with them. They kicked them out the village. What happened? These children began to experience parental rejection. It began with us. It's got to end with us. It wasn't beginning with the European. He was only, he was born in a situation that he didn't have any understanding. He was rejected. It's just like a retarded person. Don't understand who he is. He's retarded. Down syndrome. And everybody in the civilization rejects him. What is he going to experience? He's going to experience degenerate behavior. And that is what Europeans experience. They experience a degenerate behavior because they were rejected from their own parents. So all of these... Different misconceptions is crazy. Men and women, yes, we all have uh, X and Y chromosomes. The only problem with theirs is that it's mutated. Because a lot of people say, well, if the woman is God, is the white woman greater than the black man? That's another foolish statement. Because their DNA has been degenerated to the 20th degree, but they are still human beings. Because they come from the original human beings. All right. All right, we got another call here. Thank you, brother. And All right, we got call 267. Call it 267, area code. You're on the line. Peace and blessings to both of you. I'm just calling to say uh, the, the great show that you have on. I'm calling from Philly. I understand that the brother, Natural Coyote, is coming to uh, Black and Nobel in Philly. And yes. that's a great thing. I will be there. And as as of the day, as we're speaking about yeah, Charlie Green, brother, I'll leave there. You bring about 15 other people. Oh, definitely. Say that definitely. again. I, didn't hear you. I was saying that as of today, he was also speaking about trying to bring you there to uh, do a lecture in Philly. All right. Appreciate that. I'll definitely come yeah. soon. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, no question. Uh, let me speak yeah. about Black and Nobel. Black and Nobel is a very important institution. I got to give it up to them brothers. I went down there. They are in the middle of the muck and the mickle. They are right in the mud. It's gutter down in North Philly, homie. Don't get it twisted. They're murdering each other. They got drugs over there. It's saturated with drugs. Them brothers over there could be selling drugs. They could be pimping women. They could be killing each other. But they bought a bookstore, a bookstore in the middle of the mud and the nickel of things. Black and Nobel is a very important institution. I want to commend them. I want to big them up. And I want to encourage people to go and support them. We have to support our institutions of learning. Let's get out of this thing about these goddamn Europeans because, remember, they are in a diseased state. These people are crazy and out of their damn minds. They need to be re-educated. They have been lied to. That's how white supremacy works. So I wanted to say, oh, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's basically my second home there. You know, Black and Nobel been going there for years. Met the brother Am Pooh there when he was working there. So, uh, yeah, it's a great institution. Like you said, it's right in the middle of the mud, you know. But uh, I did have one question. I got one question, though, uh, in relationship to the uh, RH negative blood type when so far that uh, certain females who have a child, if they don't take medication and they have a, a child that's RH positive blood type, it kills off that child. Do you have any information on that? Well, according to um, the occult teaching, RH negative is supposed to be um, the blood type of the reptilian, and RH positive is supposed to be the blood type or the trait of the um, hairy Sasquatch being. I mean, it depends on who you ask. You will get that type of metaphysical answer from. I've done heard it all, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to the blood types, the blood types um, have to focus on if you have the original blood, which is old blood type, which dates back to over 200,000 years ago, um, which dates back to, as Nasser Tawudi stated, was to the first modern-day woman, you know what I'm saying? So that old blood type is essential. Um, that's the, that means original blood. If you have um, a blood type, then that's Algarian blood, which dates back to 20,000 years ago. If you have B blood, that means balanced blood, and that dates back to 13,000 years ago. If you have um, AB blood, which is a mixture of Algarian and balanced blood, which is the newest blood on the scene, dates back to only 2,000 years ago. So the RH factors, negative or positive, is based on those four basic blood types. Now, there's a book called How to Eat Right for Your Four Basic Blood Types, and it's written by um, Peter Diamanto. Get that book, and that will help the woman know how to eat properly in order to make sure um, that the church can come out safely and actually to bring the gods and the goddesses here. All right? So that's actually what needs to be the focus. Okay. That's wonderful. That's very wonderful. Uh like I said, I appreciate both of y'all. I've been following you, Dr. Eileen, for for some years now. So um, basically I never met you, but you were just like a teacher for me. And Natural Tahuti, you'd definitely be bringing it also. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you when you come to Philly at Black and Nobel, and hopefully we can get uh, Brother Eileen Bay to get there too also. All right. Yeah, we'll try to get down there. Okay. All right. Well, we yeah. appreciate y'all. And, and make sure you remind me who you are. Um, so this is Brother Gary. This is Brother Gary. Yeah, I, I think I called I, I call in, uh, well, I called uh, Eileen's uh, Bay's Queen a couple of times to speak with her about, you know, some things. And uh, I think, I guess you were busy at the time. But, uh, you know, I also try to, you know, stay tuned in to the information, try to learn as much as I can and from who I can, you know, as long as it's valid. But, uh, yeah, when you come to uh, 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 Philly Naturality, I'm definitely uh make sure I make myself known. <laughs> definitely. Please, G. Peace, brothers. Peace. Peace. All right, we got another call. Here's area code 340. Area code 340, you on the line. Come on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, please, please. Oh, okay, I thought my phone was on mute. Um, hi, uh, I was calling. I just, My phone had cut out a little bit when you, when, um, you were talking about the blood types. I caught, like, all up until, like, the A, B, 
and the A and B. Cause, and, um, but right. I didn't catch if you did the old, if you did the old. Right. I over like, the I'm old positive. Think back to over 200,000 to nearly 300,000 years ago. Um, it's the oldest blood type. It means original blood type. So, you, of course, you have um, O negative and O positive. Then, of course, from that produce A positive, well, A negative and A positive, which is called Agarian blood, which basically Agarian blood means basically it, was, um, it became developed from the climate at high altitudes, all right? Then you have balanced blood, which means B blood, balance. And, of course, you have um, negative and positive effect. And then the last blood type is AB blood type, which only dates back to 2,000 years ago. So AB blood type dates back to 2,000 years ago. B blood type dates back to 13,000 years ago, which is right before the last ice age. And um, A blood type dates back to 20,000 years ago. And O blood type dates back to over 200 to 300,000 years ago. All right, so those are the time spans for the or, um, for the orig- um, origin of the blood types. Okay, because I, I th- thank you for telling me that because I, I, my phone my phone had cut out and I was like, oh, I missed it. But, oh, <laughs> but I appreciate that. No, appreciate you for listening. Peace, Queen. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll be getting ready to get up off of here. We appreciate y'all for um, hanging in with us. Um, one more time, I know that y'all, I know uh, all of y'all hitting up in the chat room saying this was a um, great show, excellent show, and it definitely was not just who he bought it. And um, I want to see somebody try to defeat it because I haven't been able to see nobody um, handle this yet. But this is the truth of the matter. We've been teaching this for years. Dr. W. Blair taught us this 20 years ago. Um, we started running with it. Brother Nasser Tahuti is a prodigy of that information, and, and he's hitting it, like he said, He's humble with it and he's putting it out, and it's just a truth of the map, you know. So um, go and do your study and research. We gave you many of books. Um, go and study. All right, we out. Peace. Folks, we're on the radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of the ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works.